All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome. So today we are doing a builds refresh for Geyer. This is, of course, for prosim.com. For those of you that don't know, you can go to prosim.com. That is a site where I've compiled all of my builds together. They're very easily searchable, and there are a number of other guides that are there, including guides that are coming from the free-to-play very soon. So if you haven't checked that out, go check that out if you're looking for any Warframe builds. But with that, this video is for that site. This is Geyer. Geyer has some new toys to play with that allows her to play with some toys she didn't have access to before uh, that were available. That being, this new build has Cathode Grace. Cathode Grace Augment. Eliminating an enemy with Cathode Grace uh, while Cathode Grace is active uh, will release an additional discharge from Rotor Swell with 200% damage and extend its duration by the same amount. So, what this does is twofold. One, it just increases your damage, which is, of course, fantastic. But in addition to increasing your damage, this makes it so that you do not need to worry about Rotor Swell or Cathode Grace in terms of refreshing them and recasting them ever, as long as you are killing enemies, which is absolutely phenomenal. Because that means that you can be really, really greedy in terms of your efficiency and just energy economy in general, uh, because your main expensive abilities are going to be always online. That allows us to go for this Blind Rage build, where we put in a ton of strength and get up to full armor strip on Pillage, with, of course, the help of Gross Projection and Archon Shards. This version of the build does require that you have one regular Crimson Shard and one Tau Crimson Shard on strength. The reason for this is because this adds up to 25, and while normally... Instead of Augur Message, uh, we, we could, of course, just go Secrets. This is actually 1% off of the 268 you need to be at before Molt Augmented comes into play. So you're actually not going to get a full armor strip if you just use this, because this is 24, not 25. That being said, you can, of course, just use three regular shards, and that's going to give you even more strength than you even need. But... If you're looking for an efficient place to use a Tau Forge Crimson Archon Shard, which has come up more than I thought it would in recent builds, um, this is a solid place to use them. We'll get to the blue shards in a second on some other alternatives that you can use. With that, this build also is one that can use Archon Stretch because, of course, we do electricity damage with our abilities as Gyre, so this helps even more with the energy that we're going to get over time. This is pretty much going to always be up, giving us two energy a second, uh, and that's going to combine with the four energy a second we get from Cathode Grace to make our energy economy very, very, very smooth with Primed Flow. Now, notably, if you do not have very many Archon Shards to go around, especially red ones, you can change this build up a little bit, and it ends up making the build a little cheaper to run as well, as this will save you a forma. Putting in Augur Secrets, also, of course, like, chunking this down to just regular reach, or regular stretch is also fine. This electricity, like, energy, energy generation is not necessary for this build to work. Um, but chunking this down to Augur Secrets, so you can get 24 here, and then instead of two Archon Shards here, you can just use one red one, and then using just blue shards, which... We all have trouble figuring out where those are going to go, and just throwing those in and having those be energy max on Geyer can replace Prime Flow fairly easily. I will say that in my testing, I've found this to just be a little worse, but it's not so worse that if you, you know, use it, you're going to have a bad time. Uh, and it also will hit that 328 that you're looking to get for the full armor strip a little bit faster, as you don't need to kill all 250 enemies to get the strength required, and you do end up at a little bit higher strength than you would otherwise. Um, that being 9% higher strength than you would otherwise. But yeah, other things on this build, uh, survivability. Adaptation, this is really, really nice for most levels of play. Obviously, if you're going to go super endless or some insane stuff like that, you're going to want to focus more on shield gating and probably switch this out for like rolling guard. But most of us aren't going to do that, and adaptation has been fantastic for making it so that I just have to not care about any regular enemy and only ever worry about like, you know, enemies hitting me with something actually meaningful and strong. Prime sure footed also very, very good on Geyer. Being knocked down is one of the ways you can just instantly die as you are. Your survivability is going to be based on, you know, casting pillage uh, and having all the enemies just be dead. So if you get knocked down and can't do that, that can easily result in your death. Prime sure footed makes it so that cannot happen and you will not have to worry about it, which is, of course, excellent. If you don't have access to Prime sure footed, Handspring, I'm sure, will do just fine here. Uh, and also, you can, like, forma for this later, as there's enough capacity left over to just use Handspring in the meantime. 
once you eventually get prime sure footed you could easily upgrade to it with another forma thrown in here uh that would also save a forma on the build for the time being so if you wanted like if you want to go like the lower investment version you go handspring here don't forma this uh and then instead of prime flow you go auger secrets and that's especially helpful of course if you don't have prime flow i will say prime continuity not necessary here regular continuity would be fine uh you probably do want umbral intensify uh and by probably do i mean if you don't you're going to need another tau shard uh because we are really getting every ounce of strength we can out of the fewest mods possible that being just blind rage and this uh if the math doesn't come out to where your strength is at least 268 before molt augmented you're not going to get that full armor strip and at higher levels and higher levels that is going to start to matter more and more as enemies retain more of their armor uh but yeah other things that are notable on this build on this version of the build I like Garkin Energize. I do like it. Of course I do. It's great for filling up this gigantic energy capacity that we have. But if you find that your survival is a bit more in question, or if you're on a budget, Aegis is fantastic. One copy of Aegis basically says 3% chance for 12 seconds of invulnerability, and that's quite nice. Uh, and of course, if you have a higher ranked one, use it. But even just a single copy is very, very good for survivability for her. Uh, so if you're looking for kind of a more budget arcane to put in there, that one's fantastic. Molt augmented, irreplaceable. Have to use it. There's really just nothing to be done. You do absolutely need it for this build to do the thing it's looking to do. Also of note, uh, if you do not have pillage able to be subsumed, you can use uh, embers. Embers 3 as a subsume will strip uh, a really good chunk of armor. You are going to need to cast it twice always, but... That's not such a big deal. It also provides like a decent amount of crowd control. It throws heat procs on enemies and like, you know, it's a knockdown. So it does some good things. There's definitely, you know, a plus and minus to pillage. I think pillage is pretty strictly better. Um, but yeah, embers three ability also subsumed on here. Really easy to acquire for helmet and similarly very good. You definitely can use it here, uh, especially if you are otherwise doing the full build and just don't want to do the Hildren farm, which I honestly can't blame you for. Uh, but yeah, overall, I'm really happy with this, and also worth noting alongside this, uh, because of course you get your like crit and everything that you're getting off Cathode Grace, uh, weapons that have a lot of crit, such as this Medusa that I'm using, which is Gaze Splat Haymaker, for anyone that's wondering, um, this is, really loves it. Yeah, this and Death Cap and all of like the really high crit kit guns, absolutely love having Cathode Grace on them, it just makes them even stronger than they would be already, and they're already very, very good, uh, and of course, you know, or glaive crits and so on and so forth i am using the proboscis Cernos. uh honestly this is really more for fashion than anything else because i think the gyre stance looks really nice with a bow and the proboscis Cernos is very good um yeah mo mostly a fashion primary in this particular case the only other thing to consider uh is that gyre can have a hard time uh with your nullifiers so something like a beam weapon the new core medusa so on and so forth Anything with a high fire rate is going to really shred them, and she's really going to appreciate that as well, as it will keep her safe from them also. Uh, in terms of companions, uh, so normally you'll usually see me using uh, just like the Panzer, which is just the Panzer Vulpophila. Uh, however, I would also tell you that the Sly Vulpophila are very, very good with Gyre, especially if you find that your survivability is a bit more questionable. Uh, the difference between the Slys and the Panzers is that Slys are very defensive, and they give you a lot of dodge chance. So you're going to be more survivable because shots will just simply not hit you when they would otherwise. And the Panzer is more offensive, putting viral on all the enemies and basically being a miniature Saren. Uh, both of them can't die and they're very convenient to have around. They're just for opposite purposes. Overall, Panzer will be more damage, but Sly will be more survivability. Uh, so that is also a consideration. Anyway, as per showing this off. Let's, uh, I mean, sure, 20 Corrupted Heavy Gunners is probably fine. I will have to cast Pillage twice here, um, because just the nature of the thing. Because I will not, of course, have, uh, all of the enemy build up over the course of a mission. But two casts to get this down is, of course, not bad. And this is just with abilities, not using any guns or anything. And you can see it. It makes pretty short work of the enemies. Uh, these are, of course, you know, not super representative of, like, the Steel Path. Uh, but they are a huge chunk of health at level 190. They're pretty similar. And of course, this build works to get that the amount of cast of pillage down to simply one. And also crowd control by throwing these into hallways and such. Um, so that works very, very well. But yeah, it's much better. It's a much better time for Geyer now. 
Uh, spamming uh, Pillage really makes up for the survivability problems that she was always having before, and of course means that her damage will scale up into Steel Path for a good number of levels, which is fantastic. She is much better and much more playable now, and I am very happy to see that. Enjoy the Steel Path run, and I will see you guys tomorrow. All right. Time to see if we can't re-level Gyre real quick. Uh, this also might be the test for uh, what I'm showing on stream. I use Enric here. Starter energy is a thing. Turns out. Starter energy is now over. Once you get your three and your four going, the idea is that uh, you never need to do that again. That is uh, kind of the goal. You keep your ones down, enemies don't die, you press two, and then they die. Enemies do not like this. They are not fans of this. They do not appreciate it. They wish they were not here. Okay, this looks like leveling's not gonna be any problem. Yeah, um, yeah, guys, she normally has so many survivability issues that pillage really helps with, and this doesn't get rid of any survivability issues. Like, if you ever end up in a situation where there's like, you know, a real mess or like you're fighting like a boss type enemy or something that's just immune to everything like say like a kuva lich or something like a kuva lich is gonna make your day really hard but again it's a kuva lich those aren't even steel path enemies so it's not that hard just by default And against like your regular enemies like this as long as you bring a weapon that's good against nullifiers if you're going to run into them which in this case i i have one which is the gaze um my medusa hit gun here then it's all it is all very fine the increased crit also specifically with kit guns uh the kit guns generally really really love the increased crit that she offers you can see just, just using my one here on this xmas it goes through the uh their overguard really easily. And basically using her one instead of her two, I feel like is right because it just allows her to get like a lot more lockdown going, especially on your regular enemies where it's like enemies don't get to come through here. Like they get partially stopped, at least, well, at least partially stopped, if not fully killed. Uh, and you just get to not have to really worry directionally so much and because you get three of them you can have like one in your center area and then one on both of your sides and that really solves a lot of problems uh if i mention it I th i'm pretty sure i will mention it during the video uh this is the version of the build that is using prime flow and this really just makes absolutely certain that you're never going to have any energy issues and i think even in low level you'll not really have any problems although in low level you know no Warframe that has anything going on really has problems in low level, of course. Um, you'll have to use Zenric more often, probably, just because of a lack of enemies, I would suspect. But overall, I don't think most people are too worried about there being a lack of enemies and no one there to kill you. Oh, no. In a situation where you need someone to uh, kill everyone on Steel Path, this works quite well, which is great. I will say a thing that maybe looks like not needed in the build, Adaptation, really helps a lot with not needing to always be casting two. I say right before casting two a bunch of times because of an Xmas. Um, but yeah. Oh, here comes the Acolyte. So the Acolytes are fun because you get to like just set up for them. I will say violence is of course still a problem, but he doesn't dispel your ones whenever they're there, so... That's very good. 
And I'll just let this, um, my orbs just kill angst here. And that's without, without me shooting at all to help. I think that's very good. The orbs do considerable damage once the armor is gone. You also get to mess around and do some Parazon finishers for laughs. Who doesn't want to do that? Uh, it is worth noting that your one does get bonus damage whenever you actually hit enemies with it. Oop. There we go. Shields are back. Small scare there. But not a big deal. Yeah, you're, you're definitely not, not in danger anymore, especially when Xmas are concerned. But... As you can probably tell, I'm also, like, not using everything really available to me here in order to survive. Although, as you're seeing right there, uh, using the Glaive and uh, Single Pistol combination is actually really, really good. Uh, because that does increase your survivability at your, like, front angles. It's actually kind of, like, fairly equivalent to um, having Garuda's one out. Because the blocking is that effective. I and mean, it's all your damage, right? So whenever you can just do this and not take the damage, it's pretty nice. Also, another thing about the Parazon finishers is that you are invincible during them. So they do work as kind of like, you know, being able to uh, give you some iframes, really. Another life support capsule is now available. So even if it's not necessarily optimal, it might be kind of right. Two, also purging like heat procs and everything like that, which are normally a huge danger for Geyer. Just, just insanely good, actually. Like really satisfying to have a caster that like stays a caster whenever you apply a helmet to them, uh, which is usually reserved for a Warframe like, like Saren normally. Where you apply like survivability stuff to uh, her, and then she kind of just gets to do her thing still. I really dislike it whenever a Warframe that is like, you know, you look at them and you go, oh, you're a caster Warframe, and you're supposed to cast your abilities and enemies are going to die. When then whenever they get to steal path, it's like, well, that doesn't work anymore. So instead, what we're going to do is uh, you're going to use this gun, and you're going to use Roar and shoot them if you have a good survivability ability. Or you're just going to suck it up and deal with it and use... X defensive ability, and now you get to play Steel Path and not use your powers. Because that doesn't really feel like a frame is very good at Steel Path whenever they have to rely on, you know, not anything that they do. But clearly, as long as you have an armor strip... Uh, which, if I didn't mention it, Fire Blast is also a reasonable choice here. For those of you that don't have Hildren, you'd have to cast it twice, so it's a little more spam heavy. But if you're willing to, like, you know, do a big investment and get, like, Archon Stretch and stuff, that also shouldn't be too big of a problem. Oh, they took my gun. Give me that. I need it back. There you take my gun. Yeah, just wiping these enemies out. Like, the moment their armor is gone, they just they just die. And the increased strength from what we used to build Geyer with also definitely really helps with making that um, just better. Oh, well, there's violence. Go for this. Get that armor strip in. And then my three and everything is down, which is nothing I can really do about. Yeah, that'll be a glaive to finish them off. 
We'll head down here. Yeah, violence, you know, I mean, violence is a problem for most Warframes, if we're honest. But handled reasonably well, I think. I mean, we got the armor strip off, which is the most important thing for increasing our damage against him. So, ends up pretty quick and easy, I would say. And we're about out of here at this point. Both Acolytes down. Yeah, just rushing through here. I mean, e even being able to kill on the move. And it's worth noting, like, this will... Ex like, I mean, you can do this in low levels. Like, you don't need pillage in low levels. And you can just, like, you know, zap them. And you don't need to cast pillage all the time. Because low-level enemies just won't be able to handle it. Worst thing about low-level enemies is there's usually never enough of them. Yeah, I think that she's probably re-leveled uh, pretty handily by now. Oh, yeah. Very re-leveled. Also, very cool dodge. Wish I had the Tau shards to throw in the yellow shard I want to throw on her right now, but unfortunately, I don't. Yeah, re-leveling Geyer, um, I recorded this before I'm recording the actual video, so hopefully you enjoyed this absolutely nutty shit Geyer can do now. It's not too crazy. It's really where she should be, honestly, all things considered. All right. Thanks for watching, everybody. And, of course, as usual, thank you very much to all of the new and returning patrons that we have, and especially to the super patrons. $10 plus patrons, so that is Brutus Salazar, Dylan Dworsky, Thrain, Avon, James Harsthorn, JC for Science, Jefferson Clark, Joshua Adams, Lou Xanth, Malik X. Williams, Pinty Ginja, Mitchda, Nicholas Gridley, Paradise, Vermoxidate, Shan Hardin, Zach Zaner, and Zerafir. Also, of course, thank you to the rest of the patrons, $5 and $2 patrons. Uh, and the thing that I just wanted to note, we have news on Duviri. That's going to be next month. So this month, I think I want to do two different uh, new player free-to-play throughs. One for the Duviri stuff next month. And I think I want to do one this month. So look forward to that happening. And this will probably be on the end of a couple of those videos whenever it does happen. Um, but yeah, I think there's going to be some free-to-play through progress there for people who have been waiting for that. And that's going to lead to a bunch of new guides. So yeah.